Hey guys, so I have a book review for you today and it's on a book that I finished yesterday called The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. This is a young adult book and it's kind of dystopia but it's also got some sci-fi elements to it. The basic plot is there's a boy named Todd and he lives in Prentice Town which is on the New World. There's a lot of questions that arise from this book. You're kind of supposed to be left in the dark at the beginning. You're not supposed to know what's really going on. You're sort of plopped down into this world and you follow Todd as he gets his questions answered and you get some of your questions answered. What's odd about Prentice Town is that there's no women and there's something called the noise and all the men can hear each other's thoughts. So you constantly know what people are thinking and it's hard to hide your secrets from people, which obviously plays a huge part in this book. So Todd is about to become a man, but before this happens, Todd stumbles across a girl and it's the first time he's ever seen a girl. Her name is Viola and he can't hear her thoughts. This kind of kickstarts everything that happens. They're being chased. He wants to try to save Viola because the people in Prentice Town want her. There's a underlying plot with Prentice Town and actually the rest of New World who you meet and Todd doesn't even know exists. He's very, very sheltered. It's both of his parents died, so he lives with um, Ben and Killian, and they kind of kept him in the dark about a lot of things because they didn't want people to know through his noise that he knew certain things. So there's a lot of times in this book where there are questions and you are trying to figure out what is going on. How do we feel about this book? So this book is a really, really popular book. That's why I picked it up. The first thing you'll notice about this book is it's actually, it's written very poorly on purpose. Todd was never taught how to read. It's part of one of the things of Prentice Town. They don't teach their boys how to read. The boys don't really get any schooling. And so when he is talking in this book, um, when you're reading the what he's thinking, some of the words are misspelled and for people who are really into grammar and like things that are spelled well, this can really get to you sometimes. It bothered me a lot in the beginning, but I started to get used to it as the story went on. He also, because you're following his thoughts, thinks in run-on sentences all the time. So I'd be reading a passage on the page and it would be like half a page long and there would be no periods. It would just be him thinking, 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 thinking the entire way down. And it, that kind of bothered me still even towards the end the way the flow was kind of like short long short long because he'd be like there's sometimes be lines where it'd just be three 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 words and then there'd be a huge passage which was run on and yeah it just it bothered me sometimes Ugh. I did really like the mystery part of the book I liked not knowing what was going on and sort of figuring out things with Todd and also being like I want to know why is this? And what are these speckle things that they blame all this stuff on? Speckles are these aliens that were on the planet and Todd is taught that they're bad, but of course things aren't as they seem in this book. The characters themselves, Todd is younger and he's he makes some really irrational bad decisions sometimes and there are points where I was like, why don't you question that? Why are you just going with it? Why aren't you attempting to do this or attempting to do that? It would just, mm, it would irk me that he didn't, wasn't more curious about stuff or did something instead of something else. Um, Viola was much better. She was much more like, okay, you're, I think you're doing the right thing. I agree with you here. She's sort of thrown into this world. She doesn't know what's going on. So I can feel, you know, more sympathy with her if something doesn't go her way because she doesn't know what, you know, the rules of the new world are. She doesn't understand some of the things on this planet. So I was more sympathetic to her. There is a really, really bad character in terms of evil, not like horrible, I hated him because he was written badly, but there's a really, really evil character named Aaron and he's a preacher in um, Prentice Town and he has got to be the epitome of evil. I mean, this isn't really giving anything away, but he kind of gets his half of his face ripped off by a crocodile towards the beginning of the book and for the rest of this book, this man is like chasing after them and he has half of his face missing and he's just, uh, I, he's obviously insane, which you get from the book, but 
at the same time, I'm like, how, how does this man surviving? I mean, half of his face is ripped off. He's bleeding. And then he gets even more beat up. I mean, it was relentless. Another thing about this book is that they can actually communicate with the animals. The men can hear the animals' thoughts, and Todd has a dog named Manchi, and the beginning, it's just, it's funny, because it's like exactly how you would picture if a dog could speak what Manchi's saying. Um, but anyway, Manchi definitely grew on me in the in the story. He, at the beginning, I was like, okay, this dog is kind of annoying. And Todd hates the dog too, but as the story goes on, of course, and things start to happen, Manchi turns out to be what dogs are, very loyal. The final thing that I really want to say about this book is the cliffhanger. Since it's part of a series, the author can just leave things wherever he wants and make you have to read the next book to figure out what's going to happen. This has one of the most intense cliffhangers I think I've ever read. Like, the author was obviously just like, here's a bunch of things that are going wrong, all the bad people are coming at you, somebody's dying, somebody's, you know, practically passed out because they've been running for so long, but, you know what, I'm gonna leave you here, so, yeah, that's too bad for you. Overall rating, I'm going to rate this book three and a half out of five stars. I had trouble relating to the characters and not having them drive me crazy. It also took a bit to get used to the writing. But at the same time, I did want to keep reading the book and the overall idea uh, and the execution of the story was really good. In terms of recommendation, I would recommend this book to people who don't mind writing that is kind of weird because if it bothers you, this is definitely going to be, you know, an issue for you. Also, anybody who really likes a good adventure story. This has a fantastic adventure story. There's sci-fi elements, there's dystopia elements, and it's part of a series. So if you really, really like it, you get to keep reading more stories about it, which is great. Yeah, so that ends my review of The Knife of Never Letting Go. Thank you for watching. Um, you can, of course, subscribe to us on YouTube. You can follow us on Twitter and friend us on Goodreads. All the links are below in the doobly-doo. And I will see you guys later.